Hi, I'm Chuck, KK6USY. Welcome to Ham Radio Adventures. As you guys know, I've been working with a little bit of the Mesh-tastic stuff. It's really got me kind of messed up. I can't understand why I can't make con contacts. And some of the people in the comments said that they've seen the same thing. And I've also seen that, um, you know, some of the guys say that they feel like they're the only one there. You're not, most likely, depending on where you're at. But people have a tendency to, if they don't know you sometimes, they may not get back to you like they will on ham radio. So that could be a problem. Now, I got lucky enough to get into a Discord for the Sac Valley guys. And my goal has been to get my buddy Dennis up there in Sac, and it hasn't happened. Well, at home. So today we're gonna to take a look at a pretty easy, simple, cheap antenna to build that seriously, I think it took me 15 minutes to build it. It's pretty easy. I was gonna do it like a real build, but I do have some stuff on it, but it was so fast that I kinda of had it built before I uh, recorded it. So let me take you over and show you what the parts are. First of all, I printed this and the printing time took more time than anything in this whole build. You don't have to print it and we'll talk about that when I take you over. So let's go over and check it out. Okay, for today's Yagi build, I printed this. I'm gonna have to reprint it, but uh, this actually should have gone here. So I'll reprint that before I build it. But basically what I have is a two piece like that for the, uh, the boom. And it, it just bolts to these two holes here. And uh, I will redo one. Now, this part here, this hole here, is for my mast. My mast has a half inch hole at the top that you can put a bolt through, so that's the way I'm going to do it for this. This is going to be for portable. This is not going to be my setup at home or anything. At least I don't think so. If I do, I'll build it out of something different. Now, if you don't have a printer, this doesn't really matter, okay? You could, um, well, let me show you what else we're going to use first. So there's the little rods. These are 16th inch aluminum rods. I got them right off of Amazon. I want to say they're about five or six bucks. Okay. I cut them with this little cutters here. If you guys don't have some of these and you're a ham or you mess with this kind of stuff, get some. They're five or six bucks a piece or less. And uh, you can get them right off of Amazon. I'll put a link if I can for these two because they're super, super handy. They were great when you, when you do uh, zip ties and stuff, you can, because they're a flush cut on this side, you can flush cut right to the edge so nothing left to cut yourself because those things can have sharp edges now like i was saying if you don't have a printer or anything that's not a big deal if, unless you have a friend or something but you can do a piece of pvc the hard hardest part about this is getting it straight even without a drill press it's hard to get anything straight but there are little guides you can buy okay to drill through pipe i haven't had the greatest luck with it but i can get them fairly straight or you can just use a piece of wood. <laughs> Wood's easy to find. Uh, I think if I was gonna do this, I might buy a two by two, something a little thicker, cause you're gonna wanna have holes this way if you're gonna use a, you could you could do it, but you're gonna wanna have this hole for like a U-bolt, um, a if you're gonna use a U-bolt. You know, have to go through this way. You could still do it if you just bought a square piece. Uh, you do wanna keep it light. Buy something that you can paint up and uh, preserve or stain or something like that. A piece of redwood would be great if you can find it. The, the, the sky's the limit on this stuff. You can you can use a, uh, a like a half inch by half inch piece of metal tubing, aluminum tubing. It can be, the one we're doing is basically nothing is attached to the, uh, these holes here is where it will attach. Sorry about the sun, I don't, I don't have any shade today. But the, uh, the coax will hook to these two points here, and that's why I put those, because the aluminum, you can't solder. But I'll show you how it hooks up once I get it built. Like I said, these are going to be the rods, these little rods right here, super easy to play with. Now, when you adjust these things, and while I'll show you adjusting it, because I'm sure I will have to adjust a little bit, it's like 16th of an inch at a time. <laughs> I mean, if you take an eighth of an inch off, it makes a huge difference maybe less than a 16th, maybe as small as you can clip off each time. But what I'll probably do is, you can see that little black mark there. I'll probably put a black mark and right at the edge, and then I'll cut maybe half of that mark off, all right? 
let me get it built and I'll be back. So here is mine already built on the mass. As you can see here, this is a half inch bolt and it bolts into the top of this right here. It's threaded. It's kind of a special mass. I think it's set up for doing uh, satellite stuff for uh, TV. There it is all built. I do need to adjust it still. All right. All right, that really is an easy antenna to build. Uh, all the specs were like spot on from the guy that did it, and I'll show you that also today. But I have to tell you guys that uh, it's nice that I got in with the mesh group up there in SAC on their Discord. One of the guys has a logger that if you hit his node, it logs everybody that hits. And somehow, I guess it, log it logs all the nodes either along the way or that you hit in that contact. So that's pretty cool. And I don't have to have anybody come back to me. I mean, people have. I've also gotten to know the people up there and they know me now. And now if I do happen to get through, they will answer me. So that makes it a little bit easier to test all this stuff. Let me show you the logger stuff and then we'll talk about, well, during that, we're, we're gonna talk about how well it did. So let me go on the computer and bring up the logger for you. All right, so I didn't do a lot of uh, recording actual when I was out with the antenna, but luckily I'm in the, I'm in this Sac Valley Mesh Discord, and one of the guys has this gateway or a uh, he calls it a logger, and it logs contacts that hit his gateway. And as you can see, this is me right here, Meshtastic One A A Zero port. And I sent a message out says afternoon all testing a new antenna. <laughs> Lo and behold, I hit his. Now, this is 71 miles away, air miles. And I think that's pretty awesome. I did do this with my alpha antenna on the one I have at the house here that's got its own solar power. I didn't hit it that day. This is the first time I've hit it anywhere. I mean, yeah, I was up in Sacramento and couldn't hit it with just a little one of those bend over antennas. But what it shows here too is the different ones I hit. So this is a packet here. Here's hell. Here is 666 and gate. So I, I hit all these guys at 1221. So then I send another message out. Oh, actually, for some reason it, it hit again here. And I was able to get this guy here, JB with my uh, portable setup with the small antenna up in Sacramento. And then it hit this guy, EJNR. And then I get this, this message from the bluffs. He's the guy that has this stuff. And he's like, holy shit, Chuck. And he start. he asked me where if I'm at home and I'm no, no, I'm not at home. I'm at the location out on the, on the hill. But while I was there, I actually, was able to hit my home outside node. So that's a good thing. Now, I don't remember for sure if I was pointing at her. I received it off the back. Of, as you know, some of these antennas, maybe I didn't talk about it here, but uh, the antenna that I picked is a six element. It had the, the lowest front to back of any of the higher gain antennas, which is kind of a good thing, I think, because since you do shut the backside off and the sides off, it it is nice. And this thing did have a pretty wide angle. Um, they received me at least 45 degrees off each direction. So, you know, it's probably had like a six, 60 or 70 degree angle up there. So then I sent another one that says, looks like the antenna might work. And I hit uh, this guy, K-E-R-J-B again. And if lth so i'm hitting different ones now while i was up there i was up there for like an hour or so maybe just a hair over <laughs> it was hard to send messages because i was having so many nodes hit my hit my node and i think i hit 82 in like about an hour um let's see okay so this is them sending some stuff here I did get some messages back also guys were, you know, this is during the day when people are working and I'm lucky to get people back. I probably should do this on a weekend when most people are off, 
Uh, this guy says I made it into Benicia. Benicia was just over the, it wasn't very far. And then it shows where, who he was hitting. So, and then, uh, I guess, hopefully the guys can see my cursor. I don't know if you can see my cursor. It doesn't look like it. I'll, I'll try to keep them up. So the top one, and this is me again. So I, I, I put out cool and then I hit uh, DLF3, OVWO, and I don't know where all these places are. So uh, it is nice if you guys are see somebody testing, let them know where you're at. And then I get this message here. This I don't think this was for me. It's for this Chris guy. This is Oxford Mesh. Pretty sure I'm pretty sure I hit him also. And then Chris gets back. And then here I go again, right here at the top here. I'm just testing a DIY Yagi. And I hit, uh, this is, a, and I'm take, I'm charging, or I'm sending different directions here. So at this direction, I don't remember what it was. I should have wrote all this stuff down, but I get this uh, gateway here and this gateway here. Uh, FZ underscore zero, and then EJNR. And then here again, I just throw out a, a, a time. This was actually towards, okay, this one was towards my, I think it was towards my house. Or it might have been the first one I sent off the back. So it's a one 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 eleven basic is what I'm saying. And I sent another test. And this is the only way I can then I hit the hell, JB666 and OVWO. Like I said, I don't I know the JB guy, he's up in SAC someplace. He told me the other day, but I forget. Then my buddy uh at uh Dennis, he sent one out. I don't, I, I did have something about that, but I don't know exactly what it was. It, it looked like some, it was passed on by another node. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. I'm still new to this stuff. So, um, and then this guy says, howdy, I get howdy back and let's just see wh who he was. Well, that was, oh, that was Dennis. I did get Dennis. Okay. And I did get back to him. So. The problem is until it, um, and then Dennis is like, I invented, I didn't invent this Yagi, but, uh, I built it. That's about it. So at any time you guys can just, uh, pause the video to read this stuff. I, it, maybe it makes more sense to you guys. I'm, I'm still new at this. So, and then there's Dennis. He's, I think he's, uh, he starts putting a bunch of stuff out. I asked him to put some stuff out so that I could find him because if it doesn't populate his you can do the search but you won't find them even if you know his his um his node name and stuff so and then it just he's like it he bluffs it's like he's killing it this thing worked really really well so here oh i'm still i'm still making messages testing from crockett east south so so this one i does say this is what i should have done on most of them so now i'm pat i'm kind of kind of southeast of these two messages here and then so let's see who i hit i hit this packet here which is 956a gate so i am hitting different ones at different different directions i did notice that north worked pretty well all right so let me show you this this is you can see the top here it says meshtastic underscore DIY underscore antennas uh, development hardware let me go to the very top of this I found this just by looking for antennas and this Der Bear guy the bear I guess maybe I don't know I don't know where he's from or anything I didn't read through this but you guys can if you want to I will leave a link to this because it's got a lot of good information this guy did a lot of uh, did this stuff on the computer and, and, and set up a lot of things. And this is where I got this six element. And you can see all his progression of what he did. And he's, he's got some kind of a weird thing there. I don't know if this, let's see what happens. There we go. He's got this ring here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but, um, oh, there it is. That, that was like a coax. And I'm sure that's some kind of a choke he's put in there. All that stuff has to be certain sizes and, and he uses 316. So, the hard part on this stuff is uh, attaching certain things. And if you look at the at the one I did, I added some spots where I just took screws and basically what holds the driven stuff in on mine is the two screws putting pressure on it. 
and that makes the contact to the driven unit. So if you can see, you guys, I'll, I'll just uh, go through this. He does a ground plane antenna here. Diff different things. I just started with this, and I wanted to build a Yagi, so that's where I went to, guys. I didn't read the rest of this stuff. And here he's, he's this is a different guy here, but he made one that he could set on his, his desk here. And, I mean, you can make it out of anything. These are so small that you, you know, and this guy, check this one out. He, he, he instead of, uh, he just drilled holes and set it up on a board. Like I said earlier in the video, you can make this stuff out of just about anything because it's so small, so easy to make. And sorry if I don't explain enough for you guys. I'm, I'm so used to making antennas, I forget what I, what I didn't remember, know how to do when I first started. But I, I don't see any of this being super, super hard. So here, one, two, three, four, five again. And he, I think he did a lot of playing with spaces. Now here's, here's the chart that I used. Now, if you click on these, it gets bigger. So I chose the six element. And if you look at the front to back, 16, 14, 23, 13 for the six, 20 and 17. So it actually has the lowest front to back, but one of the higher gains. So gain DBD or DBI is uh, 11.35 and 9.2 DBD. Pretty good gain. It doesn't, he doesn't give the, um, the width of the beam or anything on here that I saw. Now let's click on this one. This one gives you all your measurements. You get three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I may end up doing an eight. I'm going to try this in 10 at my house to see if I still get into Zach. If I don't, I may up the game a little bit. You can't always do two. You can do, I mean, at your house, you could have one that points to a direction you want to go. Now, what these antennas would be really good for, people that are on the outskirts of this mesh network, say they're not surrounded by it. This can get you into it. And at that point, you don't really need, if you don't have people behind you, you don't really need to be able to receive from behind, if that makes sense. But it, it goes in here and it gives everything in millimeters, which on a computer, using CAD system, making your own design for a Yagi is super, super easy because it's usually in millimeters. All right, I hope you got some kind of value out of this. If you did, make sure you hit the like. And if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, hit all, the, the bell, hit all, that way you get all my future videos. Now, I was a little afraid using the Yagi with the front to back thing, I may not get contacts from behind me, but I got my own node while I was out there. So that's pretty cool. And I was able to hit my node from out there also, the one that's outside. I don't know if I hit the other ones or not, but uh, yeah, I hit that thing. And which leads me to believe that if we can get some, find some rancher or something, we'll let us put a node up there with a Yagi on it, pointing towards the Sac Valley area. That will open up the Bay Area to Sac Valley. And they have more people doing it up there. It's flatter up there. So, I mean, until you get to the Sierra, the outskirts of the hills there, it's pretty flat most of the places. Uh, around here, it's not. So they have a pretty good network up there, a bunch of people that are into this. I think we're going to do, we're going to find somebody that can put something up for us. And I think it's going to open some things up. Now, this is still not something that's going to replace your phone or anything like that texting, unless your phone happens to be down. But it is a step in the right direction that might help this out to where this is a viable tool in the future. So I'm Chuck, KK6USY for Ham Radio Ventures. Thank you for spending your time with me today. 73 all, and hope to catch you guys on the Mastastic.